All you uh, long-term listeners to the channel already know this, but there are quite a lot of new subscribers recently, so, well, this is always just a hobby for me, and um, I do have a day job that I love. I am a professional educator by trade, and this week my job is taking me to England. So, going to be quite busy, may not be able to interact with you guys very much, but I do still have some stories lined up, so don't worry, I'll keep you all entertained in my absence. <laughs> but, well, it's a shorter one this evening, but a really, really creepy one nonetheless. All right, my dear friends, I'm not exactly with you, but I still want you to sit back and relax with your favorite drink, because it is time, as always, to listen. Coyote Valley, Arizona. Population 5,431. It was a small desert town in the middle of nowhere, which consisted of a post office, a gas station slash convenience store, a roadside diner, and a small park. The only people who seem to know anything about it are, well, <laughs> the locals. Any mention of it online seemed rather unreliable. I just assumed this was because of its size and general mediocrity. I'm 23, fresh out of college, and I have no idea what to do with my life. I've lived here for nearly a year, mainly because I couldn't find a place in my shitty price range anywhere else. It was quiet most of the time. Maybe a little boring, but otherwise fine. I never understood why the only information I could find on the town resided solely in the entries of crackpot bloggers. At least, not until this past week. I should have listened to those warnings. There's a reason why this place is so hard to find. Why the residents never leave. And, most importantly, why no one even visits, let alone moves here. The community itself wasn't exactly unkind. However, every time I tried to make conversation, they looked at me like they didn't quite see me. There was pity in their eyes. The way friends and family look at a child who's just experienced some god-awful tragedy. Well, despite this rather off-putting atmosphere, I'm a pretty outgoing guy, and I got acquainted with a few fairly quickly. There were Mr. and Mrs. Williams, an elderly couple at the end of the town's only residential block. Next door to them, and across from the tiny house I was currently renting, was a younger family and their two children, a girl and a boy. They were the Garcias, friendly enough. Now, I'm the last person to spy on kids like some creepy pedo, but a few nights ago, right before everything else started, I was up late just on my laptop. For whatever reason, I couldn't sleep. That's when I noticed them outside, just standing there at three o'clock in the fucking morning, staring straight up at the sky at something unseen, beyond the waves of heat rolling across the horizon. Somehow, a strange, primal feeling from inside my gut told me Something was coming. A cold knife of fear sliced through my body. Watching them through my living room window, my mouth went dry. They were just kids. I knew I was overreacting. Or I thought I was, at least. I guess it's time I actually talked about why I'm so desperate to share my story. Sure, some weird kids outside at night would freak anyone out. We've all seen a cliched horror movie or two, but it's usually not enough to push most people out of their own homes. About a week or two before the incident, I learned a little about the town's history. Or more specifically, the lack of it. No one has any idea why what I'm about to explain happened. And I couldn't find much on the internet about it either. But every year, from exactly the 3rd of March to the 13th, a strong wind comes out of the desert, blowing through the community. Nothing else. No clouds. No rain. Just a hot, dry air that rips through the community. 
The only quality the wind seemed to possess was a strange, metallic tang, like the taste of an old penny. It comes in sudden gusts, some lasting longer than others, with varying amounts of time between each one. At first, we only got a few each day, four or five at most. I wasn't sure why at the time, but it seemed to put people on edge. It was as if the atmosphere itself held an air of foreboding wrongness that gathered and expelled itself from the town with each ebb and flow of air. People stayed as close to the main street as possible, like they were scared to venture too near to the arid plains. They went to bed earlier, sometimes staying in the whole day. Their employers didn't seem to question their absence. With each day, the unnatural wind grew in both intensity and frequency. The town's uneasiness didn't just stop with anxiety, though. Night terrors, hallucinations, confusion. Some people's symptoms and even steamrolled into something closer to full-on psychosis. Sometimes I'd see a few walk out into the desert in the middle of the afternoon their figures slowly swallowed up by the sun and whirling air. I never saw them come back. The only ones who seemed affected differently by the wind were the kids. Those Garcia kids I mentioned? Well, oh, I saw them at the local park with their parents the other day. The faces of the couple looked ashen and worried, as if they hadn't slept in months, not days. Their kids were on the lone swing set, leisurely rocking back and forth. The family seemed uneasy when I stopped to say hello. I'd spoken to them in passing before, and they were always very polite. This time, the parents just sort of brushed me off, turning away with guilty expressions. But their kids, oh, I swear both of them look straight through my soul. This might have been my imagination, I was pretty jumpy too, but I swear I heard them whisper with the voices as soft as the wind around us. It grows. It grows. Even if I had somehow imagined it, I felt cold in the 90 degree heat. I haven't seen the family since. The kid's statement wasn't wrong though. After that day, it got worse. Along with the ever-increasing, unnatural gusts of wind, I started to hear noises coming from, well, the sky. In broad daylight. And they were deafening. It was like this loud, metallic roaring that would come and go in waves, like a siren. I doubt this is all that surprising, but... Well, I've been having nightmares too. The addition of this noise isn't helping. The actual content of my dreams is what worries me, though. It's always the same one. It's the middle of the day, and I'm standing in the desert. I'm far from any sign of civilization, and the colors of my surroundings seem oddly intensified. The sky is an impossibly bright shade of indigo, and the orange sands of the desert are stained, scarlet. The scenery around me appears to shift and shimmer with heat, and on the horizon I can see a line of three or four black figures walking towards me. They're miles out. I can see them glitch and spasm. The only difference between each dream is, each time it happens, the shapes get closer. I haven't slept in the past two days. I'm running solely on sugar and caffeine. Everyone else in this town seems determined to stand their ground. Could they really be that used to it? The ones still going to work do their best to act like nothing's wrong. Like they haven't been having the exact same dream as me. But judging by the way their tired eyes dart from side to side scanning the horizon for something unseen. I can tell. I often catch myself doing the same thing. Today is March 12th. One day to go 
supposedly. It's a miracle I've lasted this long. Maybe I could deal with the wind. Maybe I could deal with the noises. But the kids, the people, the way everyone's acting, and now the nightmares. It's just one thing after another. Why won't anyone talk about it? How the fuck do these people function with this shit happening every year? It's like this is all swirling together and intensifying. No, it's attacking my already uneasy mental state. I can't take it anymore. If this town wants me gone so bad, then so be it. I've already packed what I need. The only reason I'm still here is because it's a long drive to Phoenix. And I want to finish writing this before I go. I'm writing in an offline document from my laptop. But I'll update it again after I know I'm safe. People need to know about this. You need to know. The North American desert has always been a hotspot for paranormal activity. But one thing that people don't seem to get is 90% of those theories and towns are just for tourists. Now I know that the real dangers are the ones no one seems to know or talk about. Okay. Now I know I'm losing it. I'm freaking out and I don't know what to do. I got in my car and headed north out of town. It's late at night and I left in an absolute panic. The roar of the wind outside is deafening and I'm driving slow to prevent from running straight off the road. And then I saw it. People were standing outside their homes, in their yards, even a few in the street. I couldn't tell if they were sleepwalking or in some sort of trance, but I'm sure of one thing. They were all facing the direction of the wind, staring straight up at the sky. My insides turned to ice. Reluctantly, I followed their stairs, but found only darkness. I couldn't see any stars, but I knew the sky was filled with them earlier. That thought barely registered with me at the time. Right then, the only thing I could really focus on was my foot on the accelerator. I went from 20 to 70 on a road full of old cracks and potholes. My car lurched and rocked, straining against the steering wheel. Looking back, I know it was stupid to drive like that, but I was scared shitless. Call me a coward if you want but I had no intention of returning. I didn't even care that I'd be leaving behind most of my stuff. I had family in Phoenix. At the time, I thought, well, I'll just figure it out. What I'm attempting to explain next requires some more description because, well, you'll see. I spent the next half hour trying to refocus. I was on a straight stretch of road without another car in sight. There were no turnoffs or intersections. And by then, the last of my adrenaline and caffeine reserves had started to wear off. And before I knew it, I was actually fighting to stay awake. <laughs> this sounds fucking stupid, but I went from high alert to practically dozing off in about three minutes. Shit. I looked around, pretty hopelessly, for a rest stop, or at least some sign of life. Of course, I found none. I was still too spooked to pull over in the middle of nowhere, so I forced myself to continue. By then, it had been about 45 minutes, and I finally saw a light from a town in the distance. Oh, thank God. I was just about to relax when my blood froze in my veins. The sign on the right of the road read, Coyote Valley. Population 5,432. No. There was no way. No fucking way. 
I'd driven for almost an hour in the opposite direction of that place. That hell. I'd left town using that same road hundreds of times before. I hadn't gotten turned around, and there was literally nowhere to turn around. I was close to panicking, and as a reflex, I felt my shoe connect hard with the brakes, forcing me to cut the wheel, nearly flipping my car in the process. The sound of my heartbeat thudding in my chest made even the most mundane task a challenge. I forced myself to breathe. There had to be a logical explanation for it, even if I couldn't think of one at the moment. From there, I allowed myself about ten minutes to focus my thoughts, before I put my car back into drive. The only sound in Coyote Valley was that of my vehicle. The quiet hum of the engine seemed loud and intrusive in the early hours of the morning. It felt like the town wanted to purge me from itself, but looking back, I think it was trying to do the opposite. The wind pounded against my car. I had to fight to keep a straight path on the crumbling road. Everything seemed identical to the last time I was here, except for the people standing outside. They were gone, or more accurately, replaced. At first I didn't even see them. I thought that the shadows both in and around the houses were a result of residual moonlight, until they started to move. I was halfway down the road to my home, since I didn't really know what else to do. My dumb brain searching for some sense of normality in this shit show, I guess. I noticed the dark, humanoid shapes slowly come to life. They looked like living shadows at first, but out of focus, and more three-dimensional, obviously. Despite the lack of ambient light, they still stood out, somehow darker than their surroundings. Some of the thing's movements were jerky and unnatural, like in an old video game or a VHS. Others glided smoothly through the neighborhood, across dry, weed-choked lawns and the cracked dirt of the road. I flat-out screamed, howling louder than even the wind around me. My foot slammed down on the gas for a second time that night, which barreled my car straight through one of the figures. It dissipated like smoke for a few seconds. I felt my skin prickle with static, and my ears pop. The unnatural mass condensed together again in my rear-view mirror. Once I got about thirty feet from my house, I barely gave myself enough time to cut the engine, and bolted straight for my front door. I have no idea what these things wanted, or if they wanted anything at all. Either way, I can't imagine anything good would come from letting one of them inside my house. Right now, I was sitting in my living room, curtains closed, everything off, except for my laptop. The TV's useless, all I can get is static. Even the light seemed to quiver with a certain strangeness. I hate it. <laughs> I don't even know what's real anymore. I can see them moving outside, if I peek through my curtains. They just stare at me, stare right through me. I tried waiting for dawn, but somehow dawn was even worse. In the broad daylight, their inky bodies stand out even more. They're like fuzzy holes ripped right through the landscape. If I look close, I can almost make out faces in their endless void. Or maybe it's my fucked up head playing tricks on me. For now, I think I'm safe. None of them have tried reaching me. Maybe they don't even want to. But the noise from the wind and the roar of the sky is deafening. The longer I stay in this roaring silence, the more compelled I feel to join them in the desert.
Well, as someone who grew up in a pretty small town, not much bigger than that. Uh, that was a pretty terrifying one for me. A lot of weird folk when I, living where I was when I grew up. None of them were black misty dots or apparitions though. <laughs> well, did you like that one? Please let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I'm away this week, but I will do my best to uh, at least acknowledge the fact that everybody left comments. And I love it when you do, you know I do. So, well, I have stories lined up for next week as well, even though I won't be at home. So please do remember to join me again on Monday, because I'll be back with another story to tell you. But for now, well, you have a nice weekend. I'll see you all again soon, okay? Bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook, come chat with me on Twitter, listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud, drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt, and, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon. So, come check me out, okay? <laughs>